good y'all it's your boy ross back again with another video so we're gonna check out was john cena's 2012 that bad we're gonna check this out man john cena has always been the topic of controversy a lot of people were you know not the biggest fan of super cena and him always beating pretty much the young and uh fresh talent that people wanted to see over people weren't a big fan of his booking but at the same time kids loved him he was top of merch selling items all the time and kids love what he stood for families love what he stood for so it was kind of a give and take situation so we'll check it out man appreciate all the love and support and uh let's get right into this video you guys have been requesting like crazy premiere is here this was not supposed to be uploaded today it was actually supposed to be uploaded tomorrow but i switched it today's video is now tomorrow's and tomorrow's video is now today. It was supposed to be Kane and X-Pac today. I even started editing it, but I switched it out. It's not coming two days from now, three days, four. It's coming tomorrow because I want to end the month with a bang. And I owe you a long video to end the month. Right, around the, in the early 10s, John work. Cena started to win titles less often. It's clear as day, and despite his grip on the main event seemed tighter than a Roddy Piper sleeper hold, he wasn't scoring W's as often, and this was pretty noticeable in 2012. That year, he actually claims he wasn't doing well. So in this video, I wanted to put that to the test. I wanted to hmm. see, is John Cena's 2012 really that bad? Heading into 2012, John Cena's reputation as the top dog was somewhat threatened by the likes of CM Punk and, oddly enough, Kane. He was forced away from the title <laughs> picture, yet it was clear that he could re-enter quicker than a Chris Benoit Orlando Jordan match. In the beginning of the year, he was saddled in a feud with Kane that saw Cena turn into this dark and gritty person. Add to that, it took Cena a very... And I he never really went rogue like we wanted him to, so he went semi-rogue, but it wasn't enough. I mean, very long time to actually best the monster. In the meantime, Eve tried to make it a move on him, which fractured his relationship with Zack Ryder, but nonetheless, yeah. he did not embrace the hate and had a clear mindset ahead of WrestleMania 28. Uh, I wish he would have embraced the hate. I think all of us wished he would have embraced the hate. Just embrace the hate, John. That's what you should have did. <laughs> the match with The Rock had been building since April 3rd of 2011. They traded insults. Cena mm -hmm. showed way more confidence than usual and was even quoted as saying, Nobody remembers second place. That's why I can't lose. They know I can't lose. That's why I have to win. They know I have to win. That's why I know I have to win this match more than anything in my entire life. With that said, he arrogantly attempted a people's elbow that cost him the match and according mm -hmm. to him in storyline, sent his life into a tailspin. He got a divorce shortly after WrestleMania. Brock Lesnar randomly returned and whooped his ass and Lesnar to a match at Extreme Rules that was almost entirely one-sided. However, Cena came in clutch like Eli Manning did in the postseason <laughs> earlier that year and actually beat Brock Lesnar. So Which a lot of people weren't a big fan of. I get it coming off his loss from The Rock, but I think storytelling-wise, if he would have lost to Brock then, that would have been even better. He's just, he's just, he can't get the big wins. Ultimately, going rogue. Oh, man. Comment down below if y'all would have loved John Cena going rogue in 2012. If you think that was the perfect time for him to actually go rogue. What kind of rebounds? I wouldn't even say kind of because he beat a former UFC champion, but wait, it was technically still a bad month. And all the confrontations he had with Brock Lesnar, Cena would take more damage. Add to that, he lost to Tensai and to cap off the month, John Laurinaitis destroyed his arm. In May, Cena was absolutely obsessed with getting rid of Johnny Ace, and this led to a matchup between the two for over the limit. If Cena wins... Laurinaitis is gone, and as expected, he dominated during the match. He beat him from pillar to post, used a fire extinguisher, blasted him with all kinds of weapons, and after having so much fun with him, the Big Show randomly comes in and does the least shocking heel turn of all time. Yeah. Like, seriously, I remember thinking, he's going to appear at the pay-per-view and turn on John Cena, and lo and behold, in yeah. a two-month time span, John Cena lost The Rock. Got his ass kicked by Brock Lesnar. WWE doesn't like to mention that he actually won. Lost to Tensai and now took an L to John Laurinaitis. It's terrible, right? But from here, Cena bounced back and beat Big Show in the steel cage match to get rid of Laurinaitis. Doused Michael Cole in JR's barbecue. Ah, that, who remembers that Michael Cole? The annoying Michael Cole that was a heel on commentary. Cringe. I can't believe this actually happened. And he won money in the bank. All was good now. His year was looking like it was going to take a 180. He announced his cash in for all 1,000 and one lost. Yeah. John Cena turned out to be the first person who failed uh -huh. to successfully cash in the briefcase. All because he wanted to be like Rob Van Dam and give the champion a fighting chance. Nonetheless, should have went rogue. I be saying it all the time. Going rogue is where it's at. He got a title shot for SummerSlam and technically tapped out Big Show. 
The man was hyped to win the title, but the match was restarted, and despite the humongous task of dropping the Big Show with the AA, CM Punk stole it. By the looks of it, titles were apparently allergic to Cena in 2012, mm -hmm. but he was still putting in effort. He got yet another shot in Boston, his hometown. And this time around, Cena did everything well. He even had Punk's shoulders pinned down to the mat. It seemed like he was now a 12-time champion. He celebrated like hell, but in the process of pinning Punk, his shoulders were down on the mat. And to make matters worse, he suffered an elbow injury that left him out for about a month. So he had to forfeit his title shot to Ryback. Upon his return, the big guy was still hungry for a title shot. And Cena was ready to get his title shot. And at the same time, he was in a relationship with AJ Lee. They were constantly denying what had went down, but after Vicky Grill revealed the information, they eventually went public. Oh, and Survivor Series was yet another loss in an abysmal pay-per-view year for Cena. To cap off the year, Cena felt like a bully and managed to get a match for Dolph Ziggler's Money in the Bank briefcase. It's like a kid eats his food and wants the other kid's food, and yeah. his plan was almost about to come to fruition, but AJ tipped over a ladder, costing him the match. So no Money in the Bank, and now no AJ by his side to come for him. Truly a depressing way to end 2012. <laughs> in all honesty, when you look at it on paper, yes, John Cena had a horrendous year, especially comparing it to previous years. His shoulders were notably missing gold. He lost every time when it matters. However, looking at the calendar year, he lost only 7 singles matches and won 25. His pay-per-view record was 4-5-2, and five and two, and all the matches Damn. he lost were way bigger than the other matches. Luck was never on his side on paper. Well, looking deep into it though, he was winning a hell of a lot. Add to that, even if he was losing on pay-per-view, he main evented more than CM Punk. So yes, it was not a bad year by- <laughs> Which is wild, because CM Punk was the champ. Why is he main eventing still? I'm sorry, that just, uh, alright. <laughs> Any means if you're talking in general. If Dolph Ziggler had the year Cena had in 2012, he'd be dancing around. But I guess since John Cena's standards are insane, it is a bad year. I don't like making too many references, but it'd be like Bayern Munich not winning a single trophy in a season. There's just a higher standard for John Cena, you know? And we're looking back on John Cena's career, yes, 2012 is considered his worst ever since he became a main event talent. But the way they talk about it, it's like he was starting to wrestle Sin Cara on Saturday morning slam or something. <laughs> to be honest, they should have done more with it. Like, imagine if Cena was losing more often, he was he was losing on freaking main event or something. They probably would have built sympathy for him heading into WrestleMania 29. I think it would have been cool to see. So, yes, this is a short-ass video. I was intending to release this tomorrow. Nah, man. I think, honestly, the booking decision, he should have lost more. He shouldn't have been main eventing. He should have been losing the matches that he couldn't overcome. Like, he couldn't get the job done like John Cena's known to. And it all started when he lost to The Rock. And that would have been great. That would have been a turning point. We could have seen... because. If you go against The Rock, you're going to automatically be a heel. So it would have been great to see him go rogue. Ah, oh, man. Comment down below. Let me know if you guys would have loved in 2012 for John Cena to have gone fully rogue, embraced the hate like Kane wanted him to after he just started losing. Once he started losing, he couldn't get the wins he needed. Just go rogue. How many, how many of y'all would have loved that? I would have loved that. I think that would have been such a great character change. We saw it happen with Hogan. Once he, he turned into Hollywood heel, NWO Hogan, that was the, his best version. And the same with John. He hadn't been heel since like early in his career, and they decided to keep him face until the end of time. But I do think him going heel at that point in 2012 would have been fantastic. But you guys have been wanting me to check out this video, so here it is. So make sure you run up the likes on this video and uh, let me know if you guys think he should have turned heel in 2012. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 70K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.